You know, in regards to series of movies or movie series from the horror genre, The Golem was one of the first. Now, uh, the movie we're talking about today was number two because the original Golem from 1915, most of it has been lost in the midst of time. But The Golem, how he came into the world, also called The Golem in, uh, in German, came out in 1920. Now, the German silent horror film is a leading example of early German expressionism. <clears throat> director uh, Paul Wegner, who co-directed the film with Carol Bowles and co-wrote the script with Henrik Gillin, based it on Gustav Be- Meyerich's 1915 novel. He also stars in a titular character being a Jewish folklore created by Clay from Clay. Photographer Karl Freund went on to work on the 1930s classic Universal horror films years later in Hollywood, which of course uh, changed the world. Now, the Golem, How He Came Into the World, is a third of three films that Wagner made featuring The Golem, the other two being The Golem and a short comedy, The Golem and the Dancing Girl, in which Wagner <clears throat> dons the Golem makeup in order to frighten a young lady with whom he's infatuated. The Golem, How He Came Into the World, <coughs> is a prequel to The Golem from 1915 and, as the only one to three films has not been lost, is the best known in the series. Now, production company was Pagu, distributed by Universal Film UFA in Germany and Paramount in the USA in 21. At 86 minutes again, 29 October 1920, two days before Halloween, the country again at the time was the Weimar Republic as a sign of film with German subtitles. Now, set in the Jewish ghetto of medieval Prague, the film begins with Rabbi Lowe, the head of the city's Jewish community, reading the stars. Low predicts disaster for his people and informs the elders of the community. Next day, the Holy Roman Empire signs a decree declaring that the Jews must leave the city before the new moon and sends the squire Fronia to deliver the decree. Low, meanwhile, begins to devise a way of defending the Jews. Upon arriving at the ghetto, the arrogant Florian is attracted to Miriam, Low's daughter, for whom he has a and also feels affection. Low talks Florian to reminding the emperor that he's predicted disasters and told the emperor's horoscopes and requests an audience with him. Having flirted with Miriam, Florian leaves. Lo begins to create the golem, a huge being made of clay which will bring to life to defend his people. Florian returns later with a request from the emperor for Lo to attend the Rose Festival at the palace. He shares a romantic mode with Miriam, while Lo reveals to his assistant that as he has secretly created the golem and requires the assistant to animate it. In an elaborate magical procedure, Lo and the assistant summon the spirit Astaroth and compel him, as per the ancient tests, to say the magic word that will bring life. The word, This word is written on paper by Lo, which is then enclosed in an amulet and inserted onto the golem's chest. The golem awakes, and then the rabbi initially uses it as a household servant. Now, this is where it gets pretty freaky, because when Lo is summoned to the palace for the festival, he brings the golem with him to impress the audience. Floya, meanwhile, slips away from the court to meet Miriam, whose house is being guarded by Lo's assistant. Back at the palace, the court is both terrified and intrigued by the arrival of the golem. Impressed, the emperor asks him to see more supernatural feats. Lowe projects a magical screen showing the history of the Jews, instructing his audience not to laugh or even speak. Upon the arrival of Asuras, the wandering Jew, the court begins to laugh, and the palace suddenly begins to crumble. At Lowe's order, the golem intervenes and props up the falling ceiling, saving the court. In gratitude, the emperor pardons the Jews and allows them to stay. Now, when Lo and the Golem return to the ghetto, spreading news that the Jews are saved, there is much celebration. Now, Lo returns to his house and begins to notice erratic behavior in the Golem, however. After managing to remove the amulet, he reads that upcoming astrological movements will call Astaroth to possess the Golem and attack its creators. Lo is called down by his assistant to join in the celebrations in the street. As the community rejoices, the assistant goes to inform Miriam, but finds her in bed with Florian. Devastated, he reanimates the golem and orders to remove Florian from the building, but the golem, golem now under Astaroth's influence, outright throws Florian from the house's roof, killing him. Horrified, the assistant and Miriam flee, but the golem sets fire to the building, and Miriam falls unconscious. Now, Lois' assistant rushes to the synagogue to alert the praying Jews of disaster, but upon their arrival at Lois' house, to find that he is burning and both the golem and Miriam are missing. Now, uh, the uh, despair, the community begins begs Lois to save them from the rampaging golem. 
Lowell performs a spell that removes Astaroth from the golem. Promptly, the golem, who has wandered the ghetto causing destruction, leaves Miriam, who, who, whom he has dr- dragging by the hair through the streets, lying on a stone surface that heads towards the ghetto gate. He breaks the gate open and sees a group of little girls playing. They all flee except for one, whom he picks up, having now a docile nature. Out of curiosity, she removes the amulet from the golem. It drops her and collapses, unconscious. Lowell finds Miriam, who awakens shortly after. Happily reunited, they are awkwardly joined by Lowell's assistance, who informs it that the Jews are waiting for him at the gate. After Lowell has left, the assistant promises Miriam that he will never tell anyone their forbidden affair with Florian and asks for forgiveness for his actions in return. The Jews, meanwhile, gather the gate to find a dead golem. Rejoicing and praying, they carry back in the ghetto, the star of David appearing on the screen as the film ends. Now, Wagner had been unhappy with his 15 attempt at telling the story due to compromises he had to make during its production. His 1920 attempt was made to more directly convey the legend as he heard it told in Prague while he was filming The Student of Prague. In 1919, Wagner announced plans for Ariane und der Golem, united the two folklore characters in one film. Though posters and other publicity material survived, it was almost certainly never made. Instead, Wagner produced his 1920 film, but later starred as Professor Jacob Tenbrinken in the 28th version of Al Juran. It was shot at the Temple Off Studios in Berlin. Architect and designer Hans Polig created the film scenery as a highly stylized interpretation of the medieval Jewish ghetto of Prague. Now, in Germany, the film was a box office sensation re- received a stellar reception, one of the biggest of the decade. According to Spire Spiro, the film sold out to the Berlin premiere at Ufa Palace, um Zoo, on October 19, 1920, and played to full theaters for two months straight. The film was first released in the States to packed houses in New York City in 21 at the Criterion Theater. It was the longest running movie in the same theater that year, with four, 16 consecutive weeks or four months in the facility. Despite the hot summer, the film screened to full theaters on a daily basis, uh, up to words of six times a day. Its release started a so-called golem cult of golem-related media and adaptations. Now, uh, now the golem movie right now is in the public domain, and over the years has been released many times in poor transfers, unrestored black and white versions. It is the only movie in the golem trilogy that survived World War II. The film was eventually restored in seventy-seven in Germany and scored by Carlos Sasse. This version is not readily available on home video. In 2000, a second restoration was carried out by the Cineteca de Comune de Bologna at the Laboratories of La Mangia de Retrovata in Italy and licensed by Transit Film. This version is based on an export print transferred at 20 frames per second or 85 minutes and it was original tinting intact. It was given an ensemble score by Al Josco Zimmerman and released on DVD in Germany in 2004, the UK in 2003, France in 2006, Spain in 2003, and the US in 2002. A third fully digital restoration, this time based in original domestic negative, was completed by the Friedrich Willem Monau Foundation in 2017 as available on DCP. It was given three unique scores and released on Blu-ray and DVD in Germany in 2019, and the UK that year, and the US in Kino Lorber on, in 2020. 20. Now, the film was first uh, uh, accompanied uh, at release by a score from German Jewish composer Hans Landsberger. This original score was considered lost for decades until it was rediscovered in 2018. It was reconstructed and orchestrated, and the reconstruction premiered in Weimar in September uh, 2020. Now, uh, critical reception for Golem upon its original release was positive. The New York Times review from 102 years ago praised its exceptional acting and expressive settings, the latter of which was compared to those of another early German expressionist horror film, Robert Wines, The Captain Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Now, film critic Leonard Malton gave it three and a half out of possible four stars, calling it a chilling visual dousing story to supernatural and a classic of German expressionist cinema. Matlin, Matlin also noted uh, Matlin that as a forerunner to the 31 film adaptation of Frankenstein. Dennis Schwartz from Moses World Movie Reviews rated the film uh, B+.
Now, uh, the rating was based on its powerful visuals. Now, he's the review of the film. Schwartz wrote, a landmark of early German expressionism. It is known as striking black and white German expressionism photography of Karl Fund that the film displayed its unusual feel for the macabre and might be considered a precursor to the Frankenstein horror films and how horror films were to be made from now on. Well, a lot of people remember the term of the modern era golem because it's a kind of a a thing with the Adolf Hitler character in Glorious Bastards where they're basically saying uh, the German soldiers are being pursued by a golem. It's not the golem, it's the, the Inglorious Bastard. But it was still by the time of the Hitler area that the Jews believed that golems would rise up and uh, seek revenge or retribution for what was happening at the camps. Golem is seen as the Jewish Superman. So there's no surprise that most superheroes that you see, the golems uh, aspect of being a creation for improvement or lifting yourself up uh, is still around. But the golem, again, what a, what a, what a character. And the, the, the images will stay in your mind. Like if you look at it from a logical standpoint, it looks like a person with a bad, like 1980s haircut, but this is a superhero made out of clay and basically, you know, uh, it's so strong and so, direct in its approach, you know, it, it can be a hero to the Jewish people. And, it, and it's never really been taken up as a superhero character, even though, again, the what they call folk hero stories all, always include some aspects of a Gollum-type character among, amongst Jewish, uh, you know, storytellers. So that's the story of the 1920 version of the Gollum. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, we're a vintage movie podcast. Let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.